Hi everyone, this is Mark Kent and thanks for watching this video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to present a natural healing modality, uh, which is based on uh, mind, body and spirit. Um, so it's kind of in three parts and it's really for people who are suffering really with any chronic disease. So any, any chronic disease, um, but it's also applicable for everyone because um, if this model that I'm going to present here, this modality, whatever you want to call it, is designed for everyone. Um, so let's just crack on with it. But before I do that, I might just just say who I am. So I'm Mark Kent. I'm uh, one of the founders of Osmio Water Technology, which is a water technology company doing filtration and hydrogen and these kind of things and also run a nature reserve, Eternal Lake Nature Reserve, which is a open to the public, privately owned nature reserve, uh, which has the Pure Planet Cafe and shop. Um, we do health and wellness uh, programs there and lots of different classes like yoga and so on, um, meditation, lots of different things. So it's kind of like a holistic health wellness nature reserve. Uh, where Osmia Water is based as well. So that's what we do. So that's who I am briefly. Um, and um, what I do in that is I run a nature reserve and I'm also working on product development and uh, research with uh, three different universities on hydrogen gas at the moment. So anyway, that's me out of the way. So let's get into the subject matter of this. So have a sip of tea before that. Mm. Okay, so let's just start talking about, I would say, the mind first, uh, because we've got plenty to say about all these things, but um, we're talking about the mind and mental health, actually, in this, in this area. It's a big chunk of what we're talking about. So the reason I speak of the mind first is because in the Chinese medicine model, um, everything follows the mind. The body follows the head, if you like. So... We all know that uh, if we're not feeling great or we have stress and anxiety or depression, we, we will have symptoms in the body. So it's important that we let's talk about the mind first and then we can talk about the body and then the spirit later on. Um, so let's talk about mind first. So really, um, there's many things I've put into this, um, <laughs> which you can see the headlines here. Uh, ultimately, it involves just a feeling of peace um, and not negative emotions like anger, uh, depression. Um, so one important thing to start off with is to take note of feelings because if we are not well in the body, we also, that will be preceded by feelings. They could be sadness, they could be many things, anger, um, and then we have to then connect those feelings to what needs are associated with them. So it's more difficult than it sounds. Um, so if 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 uh, there is anger or resentment, then certain needs are not being met. And ultimately, it comes down to very practical strategies to to meet the needs. So let's say this, uh, for example, if you're um, suffering with anxiety and that anxiety is driven by the need for financial stability that's not being met then the the, the solution is to come up with a strategy to meet those needs uh, now that can be a whole video in itself about learning your purpose or your ikigai in japanese model where it's like what you're good at what you can add value to people and so on, what you enjoy doing. And it's a combination of all these different things to actually, you know, make enough income or having the right strategy to do that. So that's just a, a strategy. It can involve other people helping you to meet your needs. And it could involve reaching out and expressing your feelings and your needs in a productive way. Um, a good formula for this is I feel because I need. Uh, when you're talking to someone else who is involved in meeting your needs. Um, so it could be a loved one or a friend or a, a, a family member. Um, ask them to um, uh, say, I because I, I feel because I need. 
and maybe once you express it like that people don't feel attacked or subjected to a you know um, criticism in any way uh, and that's a good formula and if you it, likewise if you have friends or family members that are expressing feelings uh, you can say are you because you are you feeling this because you need this and that's not being met and they'll normally if you've got that right um, the answer is yes and so you can work together to find any strategies to meet needs because once both people who are you know um, say a couple let's say that are arguing for example <laughs> that's not going to have a feeling of peace and if you can't if you're not peaceful you won't sleep at night and all sorts of things are going wrong in this area <clears throat> so there's many things we can talk about in this area but let's just go through that so we talked about feelings and needs um, connecting with nature is really important and I'm going to talk about grounding in uh, later on but connecting with nature is about getting out of the hustle and bustle and going for a walk in the woods and being by water or going to the beach and putting your feet in the sea and all this kind of connection with nature hugging a tree <laughs> whatever it is um, in my experience people who are chronically ill are very disconnected with nature and uh, they don't get enough sunlight and we'll talk about that in a minute so that's important um, as is things like meditation and I put 432 Hertz here as well so look up 432 Hertz as a healing frequency uh, you can listen to music in 432 Hertz and sounds in 432 Hertz and if you do and you fill your airways with this frequency this is um, resonating in a healing sense uh, and you can look into 432 Hertz so music as well um, it's all about getting into a meditative state and so playing music an instrument um, and just losing yourself in the instrument uh, whether it's drumming or whatever it is playing the piano um, but listening to healing frequencies uh, you can uh, musicians can tune their music and make uh, root tuning in 432 Hertz which makes you feel different to music that's rooted in 440 Hertz um, again that's why I put down here what to avoid mainstream media because it's very negative programming and we've seen that throughout a lot of the uh, recent history anyway and and it's all broadcast in 440 Hertz which is not resonating biologically well okay so um, I put in here subconscious as well because connecting with a subconscious means ultimately being in a meditative state to begin with um, a meditative state is an empty state in the mind it's just nothing going on there at all no thoughts or a real feeling of peace and being centered and that's when you can connect with the subconscious mind which is actually telling you what's wrong you know and you, the subconscious knows what's wrong now going into the mind work can be really difficult and it can involve big life changes it can involve separating partners and things like that um, toxic relationships and all sorts of things um, it it requires bravery and courage to delve into these deep things and also ultimately unlocking trauma uh, everyone I've um, helped to with chronic illness has traumas we all have traumas and um, but it's it's whether these traumas have been resolved um, philosophically in the mind to not create a um, um, to not live in the body and create symptoms as a result um, so I'll give you a quick example of, of that uh, where um, feelings are harbored for a long time and if they're feelings of anger and resentment then it can lead to problems in the in the gut area and we have um, seen it with people with cancer in the gallbladder prostate and um, generally that area stomach um, where it's to do with anger and resentment and now I've put up here hormones because um, 
these things in the mind actually we have to link them to actual chemicals in the body because um, when we cuddle uh, for more than 90 seconds uh, actual these hormones are generated oxytocin um, nipple stimulation I mean think of a mother and a baby being the ultimate example of that uh, connection and the hormones it creates in the mother oxytocin uh, dopamine with um, you know Parkinson's and L-dopa um, you can look at drug addiction and, and it's all working based on hormones so we've got to see the chemical link here between the mind and the body there is a chemical link so when we if I've put you know um, experiencing reward task completion dopamine um, cuddles sex uh, oxytocin serotonin when we laugh when we spend time in the sun when we meditate when we exercise endorphins eating chocolate <laughs> exercising sex sex is in here uh, in the body it's an important thing in life um, but again um, crossing over into these other areas I've put gratitude and peace um, yeah we can be uh, being more thankful for everything we receive is good for the mind and the spirit it crosses over into spirit but yeah it's just um, healthy to be grateful for the water running out the tap for the food on the table for the shelter we've got for the clothes on our back for the loved ones and friends we have and showing it as well it's healthy um, uh, again I've put here what to avoid victim mentality it's a big thing in diseases like fibromyalgia and in Parkinson's and lots of things it's um, it's it's to do with feeling like a victim and the world in, is against you and all these things have happened to you rather than they've happened for you uh, for you to grow in consciousness and evolve and um, raise your consciousness um, so really yeah really um, there's a lot more I can say about the mind and I don't want to make this video more than say half an hour so I'm gonna move on but we could make uh, there's more content that we can link to about all of this stuff and there's more practices involved in this for example um, you can do meditation group sessions at the nature reserve you can come to gong and sound bath which are like um, sound meditation things using um, gongs and sound bowls um, tuned to uh, frequencies like 432 hertz or biologically good frequencies and they make people feel really relaxed like an internal massage and really at peace afterwards um, right so now talk, moving over to body um, because there's a lot to say about this but there are some key healing modalities involved in certain things that we do for and put into our body so I'll go through the uh, like this so seasonal organic food seasonal yes we should eat what is seasonal when it comes out the ground naturally when the berries come out when the, you know these things are, uh, are once a year or whatever you know eat the food in that is actually seasonal um, and organically produced and organically produced or biodynamically produced involves um, actually using good preparation and real compost and nourishing the soil and treating the soil as sacred and getting beautiful food and fruit and vegetables and nuts it can involve foraging and mushrooms in the woods and picking the the blackberries and 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 preserving that food because what we want to avoid is commercial farming and forced growing and genetically modified foods because um, especially foods like uh, genetically modified foods that are seedless uh, seedless as in um, hormonally modified to be sterile um, and that, that's a lot to do with things like infertility um, force growing is where you just um, create the right lighting so chicken farmers do it for eggs so they can get chickens growing throughout the whole year uh, eggs, eggs produced throughout the whole year or under lights you can grow anything um, if you from vegetation state to, to flowering state 
you just change the lighting and you can grow any any time of year indoors or whatever so is that food good uh, well no because the biodynamic uh, principle we all know that um, uh, anything a, a tomato force grown in the winter in the UK is nothing like a tomato that's grown in, in the sun in the right in the season so it, it's um, it's it's chemical geometry is not right okay and this is based so the question is why why do certain fruits and things come up at that time of the year um, and it's the biodynamic moon cycle and planetary cycle that influences that exactly uh, and the seed so okay so um, moving on to sunlight now um, I put 50 degrees so it's really important that we get sunlight on our skin so not covered up actually so we need to roll the sleeves up and get the shorts out and actually make sure the sun is hitting our skin for uh, when it's in that 50 degree window on in the sky so that's normally like the sort of mid-morning to mid-afternoon sun and now if we work at night so I want to, you have to avoid night working um, because people are asleep in that window or if you're in the house and not getting out it's um, it's this window where a lot of hormonal things happen in the body or for the body so it's very important now so the healing modality for this is to get out in the Sun when the Sun is 50 degrees in the sky and get enough light uh, on the face on your skin um, okay so it's if you're going to be doing that then it doesn't suit a lot of jobs like if you're in a office building with lights in the ceiling and no windows every day you're missing out on this sunlight you might be getting it on the weekend but that's two two days out of seven so it means we have to change what we do as well if we're working at night um, then you know we if we can't avoid that then we have to change right when when we sleep so we get maybe an hour every day of the 50 50 degree sunlight so um i'll talk about grounding next because grounding is when you take your shoes and socks off and you go onto the earth where there's say grass on the ground and you go barefoot on the wet grass and it's really 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 important that people do that and every chronically sick person I've ever met doesn't do that okay so <laughs> that's got to be a massive thing they also don't get enough sunlight a lot of them uh, but some of them do get enough sunlight and they're walking the dog but they're walking the dog on rubber sole shoes um, which are not el electrically connecting them to the ground which is um, negatively charged and now we need to do this okay so why don't we combine it with the 50 degree sunlight and get out for an hour a day even if it's 10 15 minutes or half an hour uh, feet on the grass yes they might get cold and wet <laughs> but you know going back to the mind right when you're doing this and putting your feet on the grass you want to be thinking about like putting your phone on charge refilling the battery electrically connecting to the ground breathing in that great those negative ions and filling yourself with that grounding is really important do it every day now now children full of energy and electrons and things buzzing around naturally need to kick their shoes off their rubber shoes off and they want to go barefoot on the ground so look at what you can learn from children in that it's really important we do this so don't underestimate the importance of grounding it's uh, super duper important and um, we need to do it so rubber sole get it off um, and you know we wear shoes and socks a lot of the time and I'm actually suggesting we you know use I mean I'm using like slippers like this which are you know barefoot I can just whip it off and get on the ground with bare feet very quickly uh, so that makes it easier so <laughs> okay next thing I want to talk about is exercise really really important um, every day it needs to be done every day um, we need to uh, it's very important not to do exercise which damages ourselves first of all uh, like you don't want to um, 
Um, I think it's something like 220 minus your age is the maximum heart rate you need to go to before you're, uh, if, if you're going over, you're damaging the heart. Uh, but really exercise that I recommend and do is all kind of like yoga based. It's very breathing and stretching based and it's a lot of core work as well. So in, um, in exercise, I like to do a routine that goes through warming up every single joint of the body. Um, and we do that in my weekly MOGA class, actually. So anyway, it's kind of like yoga and Tai Chi and Kung Fu mixed together. There's some cardio work with kicking and punching. There's all this kind of thing. But exercise is a really important movement. So why not do your exercise with your sunlight and your grounding? Get them all done every day and make it ritual that this is part of my healing modality. I'm going to do this exercise and as much as I can do, just just do. OK, so um, moving on to um, eating organic food is strongly related to the gut microbiome because <clears throat> the microbiome is the bacteria in the gut and it has a huge role. I mean, nothing chemically in the body happens without bacteria. So bacteria is involved in every chemical reaction. So in the gut, uh, we've got hydrogen producing bacteria. Uh, like Blautia cocodies and E. coli, and these bacteria make hydrogen gas. Okay, so hydrogen. So um, hydrogen gas is super important. Our body, this bit here, is 62% of this big circle in volume is hydrogen. So it's the most important element. Um, we've got 12% um, carbon and so on and so forth in volume. Um, so the gut microbiome um, um, produces hydrogen gas in huge volume. So when you eat, you've got the anaerobic fermentation, you've got a breakdown of carbohydrates and sugars, and ultimately it turns into hydrogen and carbon. So methane, what you fart out, is four hydrogens, one carbon. So your gut is a hydrogen anaerobic, not oxygen environment. It's a hydrogen environment. And the process of breakdown of carbon, is called methanogenesis, is that healthy gut problem. So many, many health problems are related to bad gut health. OK, so I put here to avoid alcohol because alcohol kills bacteria in the gut that, that produces hydrogen. So just just stop doing it. Um, and many other things like sweeteners, like aspartame and sweeteners do, um, pesticides do, fluoride does. OK, so if you're using fluoride toothpaste and fluoride anything, fluoridated water, then that's not good. OK, <clears throat> um, sip of tea. OK, uh, hydrogen and deuterium. So our gut produces a lot of hydrogen and we can use things like hydrogen water bottles like this kind of thing here, uh, which makes hydrogen gas in the water. So now it will bubble and actually just produce hydrogen gas under pressure and I can drink it afterwards and that's a hydrogen water bottle. Um, now deuterium is like this opposite of hydrogen. So where <clears throat> our bodies are 62% hydrogen, it, hydrogen enables a healthy biological process. It's the opposite of oxidization and aging and oxidation. It's reduction. Uh, but there's an isotope of hydrogen called deuterium and deuterium is created in the body. We get it in water and air and food and that's how we get deuterium and we deplete deuterium when we sleep so if we don't sleep we are building deuterium up and up and up and it's a biological killing thing so it's the opposite of hydrogen in that sense and you can do um, a healthy range of deuterium it, in measured in the breath is about 125 ppm and in many chronic diseases the breath range can be 160 plus ppm. So that's an unhealthy level. Um, to deplete deuterium, the best way to do it is to use deuterium depleted water and put it in a hydrogen water bottle like this. Put deuterium depleted water in this and generate the hydrogen so you can actually do hydrogen rich deuterium depleted water, which deuterium depletion is something you do uh, not every day, but it's a, it's a depletion over months um, could be three, four, five, six months maybe, but then it's done and it's depleted and um, you can do various things to keep it low, like such as a deuterium depleted diet. 
Um, so now, um, if I lived in a tropical climate and that tropical fruit, which is high in deuterium, then in that environment, I can process deuterium better. But if I'm in in England, in that kind of thing, where this tropical fruit doesn't grow, this stuff is not good for me. So I should eat seasonal local fruit uh, when it when it's available. Um, now, there's another thing. So um, in 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 meat, for example, there's far less deuterium in, in offal and animal fat than there is in the muscle tissue. There is higher deuterium in root vegetables than there is in stuff that grows above the ground. Um, and um, generally going back to this commercial farming model, I mean, there's so much going wrong with this from the soil to the pesticides, to the nitrates, to everything that's used in the in the process without, you know, treating the soil in a really sacred way and growing in a in a more permaculture and biodynamic way. Uh, but really like things that grow like fruits, like bananas that are green, um, now they're kept green until they're ripened naturally on a on a on a tree, um, and the tree sucks lectins out of the banana before to, when it's ready to spread the seed. So when they're cut green, the lectins are still in the banana. So this kind of commercial farming, ripen on a container, buy your bananas from the supermarket, is not is what to avoid basically for the body. Um, moving on to this, like if you wouldn't eat it, don't put it on your skin. It's a really good mantra because um, there's many things like um, shampoos and conditioners and deodorants and all this kind of stuff. Uh, makeup as well, um, you know, red lipstick with aluminium oxides and all sorts of toxins in them. Just, just don't do it. You know, um, wash yourself in what you would eat, like vitamin C and other things, natural things, completely natural. If you'd eat it, put it on your skin. If you wouldn't eat it, don't put it on your skin. And that's it, and certainly don't swallow it. So, um, okay, uh, what have we left out? So sex, uh, um, well, again, we've mentioned it in here with these hormones. Um, it's a spiritual thing too, but it obviously needs to be mentioned. It's, it's good for your body from a hormonal, and chemical point of view so you can look at things like menopause and all sorts of things and how this is on set and it will it will be a uh, come with a decline in um, sex drive so it's important for adults to have a healthy sex life and if that need is not being met then you need to go back into strat strategies to meet the needs but anyway that's not this video <laughs> to talk about this too much. Um, so really that's the body talked about and there's a lot more you can talk about. And I know a load of people are gonna go, oh, what about this therapy? And what about that therapy? And what about a chi machine? And what about <laughs> everything? And um, sure, there's loads of things, grounding mats and all the stuff you can do. But the point is, I'm just putting what I think are the major big hitters in this, in this category here. Um, but yeah, let's talk about now, well, forgiveness. Um, it's a potent medicine, forgiveness. I mean, again, relating back to anger and resentment, it's, you know, it's philosophy that helps people get over this. It's recognizing traumas in others and recognizing people tragically expressing un unmet needs and feelings uh, with those, you know, and, um, our loved ones and our friends and you know romantic uh, men and women and so on are, can really affect our health um, so there is a dynamic between partners that I've seen in chronically sick people which is not good energy exchange um, so there's that as well can play a big part in a chronic disease is a relationship between a husband and a wife or between a mother and a, a son or something like that but anyway forgiveness is a really neat thing because it allows you to move on and be at peace um forgiveness is you might think well sometimes people don't deserve forgiveness actually they but you know something's done against you and it's really hard to forgive that so you could bear anger and resentment so why would you forgive them they, they don't deserve it etc um well 
again it comes down to philosophy um you have to realize that hurt people hurt people so people who have experienced childhood traumas and all these things are not just traumatized but they might also going into now talking about spiritual stuff they might have actually allowed entities that are non-beneficial to influence them as well so you've got to realize that you know you might be dealing with multiple spirits <laughs> behind um a traumatized person adult man or woman i should say not person but someone someone who's traumatized and ex has experienced childhood trauma and has you know um uh, that you might have interacted with or whatever and things happen and you have to forgive and let it go and realize that things happen for you to grow and forgiveness is just really easy to do actually if you just let it go and move on and be at peace so you can be at peace uh, nothing happens to you everything happens for you it's time to learn it's time for you to grow and that's all there is to it um now spirit so we talk about spirit and what is it really i mean like uh, what does it mean and you know we talk about mind body and spirit and it's a hard thing to actually grasp actually spirit um and people can get into spiritual practice in different ways uh but i think it's really important to do that to actually engage in a spiritual practice so that could just be doing charitable work doing something for to make other people's day better who need help actually and having a mission and a purpose um now for example like people can be stuck in jobs they really don't like doing and their true spiritual mission isn't being accomplished and that can lead to you know um unhappiness um so it's really important to connect with your subconscious to find your purpose and allow yourself to to do it and don't don't hold yourself back from your spiritual purpose um and to be connected through prayer or i mean prayer is a bit different to sort of meditation in that prayer is actually asking god for help really um and also god your creator and the creator of everything is you know it's the basis of our legal system as well god i mean the bible and its commandments is the basis of the legal system in the united kingdom where we are and so really it's about your divine connection with god the creator but there are other spirits which are non-beneficial evil spirits satanic spirits and all these other things that are about here and we want to stay clear of those <laughs> so a lot of light is actually dark it's disguised light it's fake light it's not real light it's it's fake light and it's you know it's actually dark underneath so you've got to really connect with spirit and spiritual practice can come in many different forms now i'll just say for me it, it came in the form of water um i've always wanted to help other people with their water problem like i have a water problem um so water is something quite spiritual in itself it's the, it's one of the elements that like fire and everything else that actually is like a gift to us and uh, it creates everything but anyway i one day um thought actually i need to study water and i have been studying water for 10 years and the, what don't i know about and he's sitting there thinking what area haven't i studied and read up on yet and it came into my head water divination or water divining or water dousing and it's when people use rods and find water underground and funny enough we as osmio supply lots of companies that borehole drill and they do this <laughs> and some of them use um expensive complicated implements and other than others use a metal rod <laughs> so you can look at professionals like john baker who are professional water diviners that get paid to find where to drill and things like that but anyway um divination is a sort of thing that can connect you to a frequency which is kind of spiritual and it does bring you down this path but also it can split people down a 
slippery slope, should I say, on a negative path. Who, and these are people that get into magic and tarot cards and this kind of stuff because they're not connecting with God. They're actually connecting with spirits, other, other spirits. Now, think about the, the beers, wines and spirits. Why are spirits called spirits? As I'm talking about spirits like vodka and whiskey and these are, these are the spirit section in the supermarket. Look into why they're called spirits. And a spirit is different. Is is different um, in chemistry? Alcohol as a spirit is used to separate things, um, extract things from stuff. But uh, alcohol is an Arabic word, and you can look into what it means. And there might be some fake news out there as to what it means and what it doesn't mean. But it's a spirit, and it's a spirit in the way that plants are spirits and everything is a spirit, and we are a spirit in in a body that's the body i mean you can think of spirit as your breath as well because when you die your breathing stops so you can connect with your spiritual side through breath work and through breathing and meditation and this kind of thing but you can ask for help and prayer you can ask god for help you can give your problem to god you've got parkinson's you've got a disease a chronic disease whatever it is have you asked God for help? Um, have you prayed? Have you, you know, um, have you done your charity? Have you have you found your mission? And when I say mission, I mean service to others. And um, a mission is not a self-service. Um, in a spiritual sense, um, as as we grow spirit uh, consciousness we can decide to be self-serving or we can decide to serve other people. Uh, you can decide to pretend to be serving other people but actually be self-serving. Or you can be really self-serving uh, or you can be really other serving. But really this spiritual energy comes from being serving others in a good way, in a godly way, under God's laws. Um, and that brings faith and hope and energy, like heavenly energy in Chinese medicine, it's heavenly chi, is what when you when you go for acupuncture, and there's a traditional Chinese uh, 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 medicine practitioner doing that. They are not just sticking needles in you. They are they are well, they're aiming to anyway connect you with heavenly chi or heavenly energy. Or if you go to a spiritual healing service in a church, they will be maybe putting their hands on your shoulders and asking God to channel divine energy or healing to you who's suffering with a disease. So go to these things and do them. You know, Join the Bible study groups or the charitable causes and find a mission that is not just... For it. It helps you get out of yourself and be other people with your mind as well. It's, it takes you out of your mind and your own problems and now talks about a bigger purpose and a bigger problem that you can help with and put your energy into that. And then you're, you know, that can help people with mental health problems like uh, depression and so on. OK, so um, that's it, really. I've gone a bit over the half an hour I was hoping to, but I do want to delve more into the topics and there's lots of other content that you can um, look at related to all of this but ultimately um, in the center I put love because everything should come from a love center uh, the thoughts in your mind should come from a love center uh, the body you live in should be loved I mean think of yourself like a plant you're looking after you can't put a plant in a room for with you know artificial lights and expect it to be healthy or not water it or not give it good uh, compost and nutrition and not connect roots to it and give it grounding so treat yourself like a plant get your light get your grounding and do all this stuff um you know plants grow better and if, if you talk nicely to them as well so all this other stuff so um you know some of this is really practical and some of this you know it's easy to start doing um but um but yeah from a spiritual side it's a little bit harder to grasp but if 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 one were to get involved in these kind of charitable 
real charitable causes uh, that are really directly helping people. And, you know, there's a lot of fake charity out there as well. Um, you've got to look at how the charity operates and what percentage of their income goes actually to their charitable objectives. And this is all, you know, this sort of thing. But, you know, you can do charity directly to people, um, um, helping people you know to start off with. Um, anyway, um, if anyone wants to ask any questions or to delve into this more, feel free to add a comment and stuff. So but thanks, thanks for listening. And I hope um, some of these ideas will help you if, if you're suffering from a chronic disease and you want to make changes. And we know that the magic pill is not going to is not going to actually help. It's not going to solve the problem always. You know, you might have a headache and can take, you know, some ibuprofen and it, and it works. But why did we get a headache? And uh, what happens if we keep getting headaches every day and taking ibuprofen every day? We need to connect with the, this model of mind, body and spirit, you know, and put love in our hearts, in our center, be at peace, forgive every, everything, um, be grateful for everything. And let's see if this can help you get out of this whatever rut that is a, you think is a chronic disease. That, that's it. There's nothing you can do about it. And the doctor's told you you'll never get better and blah, blah, blah. And the negative programming is already gone. But we need to reprogram the mind. And uh, so much can be said for all of that. Anyway, um, hope it helps. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful and share this with anyone you think might benefit from it and um, thanks very much for listening and uh, please um, please write any comments uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas about all of this and I think this is a developing model as well um, and we could do lots of different parts in this so thank you very much again and thanks for listening take care bye